We are coming to the next presentation. It is about um, finite element analysis of fatigue response of nickel steel compact tension samples using Abacus. And the presenter is Danilo D'Angelo together with Mariana Vercolino. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your introduction. As you said, uh, I am Danilo D'Angela, PhD candidate at the University of Greenwich, and today I'm going to present a project entitled Finite Element Analysis of Fatigue Response of Nickel Steel Compact Tension Samples Using Abacus. My presentation is structured in five parts. In the first one, uh, I will introduce the topic and the aims of the study. In the second, I'll describe the contents, uh, fracture mechanics, fatigue and extent technology, in the third, I'll show the developed and finite element models and the results. In the fourth part, I'll show the, I'll show the linear results of a parametric study. And in the fifth, I will trace the conclusions. So, we know metals are among the most used materials in engineering. Fatigue represents the main weakness phase. And fatigue and fatigue represents, fatigue represents the main weakness of metals. This is, a, this is even more significant for performing uh, metals that are more vulnerable to fatigue failure. And in case of critical structures made of high performing metals, the risk of life and economical losses is enormous. In figure, you can see the collapse of uh, 100 meter uh, height turbine, and it's clear. Uh, which catastrophic consequence uh, can uh, be caused by this kind of uh, failure. We know uh, bridges are uh, among the most uh, the structures more um, mostly sensitive to fatigue or repeated lo loading in general and uh, fatigue fracture seems to be uh, the most critical failure mode for uh, in particular metal bridges um, Despite the technology uh, and the, the, the modern uh, techniques for design and assessment of such critical uh, structures, uh, it was observed that the design and human errors uh, percentage uh, remained essentially constant um, in recent years. And the, the, rate of, the rate of dead people due to bridge collapse did increase uh, in recent years. And even in case of non-collapsed metal bridges, fatigue represents the most probable cause of failure. Even if uh, this is a bit out of the context of the, present, the, the, the presentation, I decided to include uh, a slide on the collapse, the, re the very recent collapse of the Morandi Bridge in Italy, part of the motorway viaduct in Genoa, uh, just to stress the lack of attention and maintenance uh, related to such types of, uh, of, of structures, so critical structures undergoing fatigue should be uh, carefully um, assessed um, and you can see the, 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 the catastrophic uh, collapse of this uh, part of the bridge. And so how to mitigate uh, the risk of fatigue fracture failure of uh, such uh, type of uh, structures, numerical simulation by finite element analysis seems to be uh, an optimal uh, tool uh, to assess it, to address this problem. And so let's go to the aims of the study. Firstly, we wanted to assess the accuracy of finite element analysis um, with regard to the fatigue fracture in metal plates, and uh, we, we used Abacus. Then we wanted also to check the, the reliability of analytical solution. And then finally, we wanted to supply guidance for the implementation of accurate and efficient fatigue fracture modeling. We know uh, that fracture is a damage mechanism due to development of discontinuity surfaces within solid components caused by applied stress and strain. And fatigue is the weakness of materials under repeated loading, even if uh, loading is far below the strength limit. So the, the, the evolution of the crack is um, often uh, represented by the um, crack length uh, versus the number of cycles. And the crack row rate versus the stress intensity factor range allows to uh, quantitatively assess the fracture, uh, the, the, the fracture in the three um, common stages. So crack initiation, crack propagation, and accelerated cracking heading to failure. So the Paris law is uh, 
the, the, the most common model uh, to uh, consider to, 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 to model the, the fracture within the second um, uh, stage of uh, cracking, the, the stable cracking. And this is also uh, implemented in our model. So uh, modeling fracture has been always uh, challenging, but recently the implementation of the software products um, by the XFEM, um, the XFEM technology uh, solved the, the traditional issues due to the discontinuities related to the fracture process. Uh, XFEM or extended finite element method, um, it's based on the concept of the partition of unity and nodes enrichment. So the distant function phi and psi allows to, uh, to uh, simulate the crack and also to visualize, to visualize the cracking process. So once the crack tip is close to specific nodes, uh, those nodes are activated and they have uh, a scalar value for the distant functions. Processing those functions allows to quantify the cracking process. So let's go to our model. We uh, developed a finite element model using Abacus, a two-dimensional model, related to tensile fatigue testing of 7% nickel steel compartension samples. We combined both XFEM and direct cyclic analysis using low cycle fatigue approach that is the only one tool available in Abacus. The fracture, as I said before, was implemented according to the Paris model and both plane stress and, and plane strain condition were considered assuming as minimum size of the meshing elements uh, the size of 0.15 millimeters. On the right, you can see the geometry and the boundary condition of the model and on the left, you can see the values of the main um, mechanical <coughs> fracture um, par parameters. For the computation of the crack, Abacus and most of uh, other market um, software products do not provide uh, direct outputs to, to quantify the cracking propagation within the, the, the samples, and so we had to develop a new procedure based on the processing of the distance function. This procedure, this method is here referred as fee-based method. We wanted also to uh, compute the cracking propagation using the ASTM formula shown in the, in the middle of the, of the slide that actually uh, uses the displacement of the control point, the moving point that you can see here. So, and uh, in addition, we wanted also to have another uh, um, uh, another um, member for the evaluation. So, and we uh, use the analytical uh, the analytical method. So, we integrated numerically the Paris law using, for the specification of the stress intensity factor, the uh, formula given by the ASTM. And so, let's have a look to the results. On the left, you can see the room temperature case on the light of cryogenic. So in both graphs, the red dashed line is related to experimental data carried out by key metallius. The blue dashed line is related to the analytical solution estimation. And both the black and the gray lines, solid and dashed, are related to numerical models. The black lines are related to plane strain conditions and the gray one to the plane stress. The solid is related to the fee based and the dashed to the ASTM based. As you can see, there is a very good agreement, in particular for room temperature cases, between the numerical simulations overall and the experimental data. And actually, the analytical estimation uh, un underestimated the, the fatigue life. In the table, you can see the fatigue life values, again, to stress the good quality of the numerical uh, simulation. After the validation of the finite element model, we performed a parametric study in order to assess the, the quality of the finite element um, analysis results with regard to the analytical solution as a comparison. And so we considered 378 cases varying material, initial crack length, peak load, and thickness of uh, the sample. We were interested in the discrepancy between the finite element results and the analytical solution as, as um, a descriptor of the quality of the assessment and of its consistency in uh, different um, feature cases. And so uh, we found that this discrepancy uh, has a, a clear correlation with the product between the fracture toughness Kc and the dimensionless initial crack length alpha zero. And so using um, a statistical approach, 
we propose a corrective factor lambda for the, uh, for the improvement of the analytical estimation of the fatigue life, providing a fatigue life that matches the uh, finite element results proven to be more reliable. And so, as you can see here, we, we give the 13th percentile data uh, and uh, I want to recall that each point is related to a data set of cases having a size in between 47 and 56 elements and with an average standard deviation equal to 2.35. As you can see, delta, the normalized discrepancy, can be found by, by inserting the product Kc alpha zero and then lambda provides for the modified fatigue life. Of course, there are applicability limits that uh, are related to both, of course, the parameters. So Kc should be in between 25 and under 35 megapascal meter power 0.5 and alpha zero between 0.25 and 0.35. Concluding, we found actually uh, that finite event models um, developed a combining XFEM and low cycle fatigue approach are easy to implement and the analysis did not require high computational times. We saw how the numerical results overall fit with good agreement the experimental data significantly better than the analytical solution. Both the crack propagation and the fatigue life estimation by numerical analysis resulted very accurate. With the parametric analysis, we checked the consistency of the finite element model with regard to a wider range of features. And with statistical approach, we found a correction factor to apply to the quick analytical estimation of the fatigue life uh, in order to match the finite element results proven to be more reliable. So here you can find the references. Thank you for your attentions. attention. And thank you very much for the presentation. Are there questions here? We have uh, time for one or two questions. If Yes, please. Um, the numerical simulation that you showed us, the inputs of the numerical model is um, some experimental parameters. So does it really make sense to input the experimental inputs to predict what is happening in the single experiment? No, uh, actually, we use the experimental data results only for the specification of the fracture uh, me uh, model. So we, we, we found the Paris uh, constants uh, and uh, of course the geometry, the load conditions from the data, from the experimental data, and then independently we made our simulation. So we only took the uh, mechanical fracture input and the loading and geometry from the data. And then we wanted to check if you know, our, our, our modeling uh, matched the, 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 the experimental data. I don't know if it was... Uh, the question. Them to match anyway, aren't you? Eh, but yes, but I mean, um, the the strength of this model is its simplicity, and uh, very few parameters were used, and of course uh, we needed to start from the same conditions related to the experimental tests we used, and so we needed to start from the real conditions and then to simulate with this simple uh, model. Because actually there are plenty of models for fracture uh, simulation, but they are much <coughs> more complex and uh, they are very time consuming. In many cases, the programs uh, are um, developed by a hard, um, how to say, uh, programming part. So the strength of this is that it's easy and suitable and it gives very good results. This is the point. And actually with the parametric study, we also found that its consistency is not related to the single case, but we, we, we considered uh, almost 400 cases, and of course, we didn't have the experimental data related to the other results, but the discrepancy between the analytic and, and the finite element uh, solution, of course, represent a, an, an indirect descriptor of the quality of the, the simulation. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>